In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the software. At the very top, we have our navigation bar, and I'll go through each tab. First, I'll set up a property. I'll say that this is 123 Main Street. You can also enter in a city, state, and zip. Right below, I'll select a property type, and then the owner's name. Let's say manage for an owner named Bob. Next, continue. And this next page is where you check mark the income and expenses on the property. So for income, we're tracking rents received for two tenants. Here are the different expense categories and there's items already listed here. You can rename any of them. You can also add new items under the categories. And I'll check mark a couple as an example, just to show you what it will look like. Next, go to Worksheet. We get this pop-up, and this is where you'd enter in your name or company name, and that will appear on reports and notices that I will show you later. On the property worksheet, we have this drop down menu, and this is where you would select the property that you want to do data entry for. And we have a three month preview. We have our income rows right here, and at the bottom, our expense rows. I'll click on add tenants. Let's say that this is tenant John Smith. I'll type in his name. You can select the specific unit that the tenant lives in. You can also edit the unit name. You can enter in their email, phone number, write any notes, upload any documents. Next, continue. And this next page is where you enter in the lease information. I'll say it starts this year, ends this year, 1000 per month, and due on the first. Right below, you can enter in the late fee terms and keep track of a security deposit. I'll click save. And now we're back on the property worksheet. We can see tenant John Smith has been added. We can see he lives in unit one and he's overdue in red. If I hover my mouse on the overdue, we get this pop up and we can see that he owes a thousand for February. Let's say he paid. I'll enter in a thousand and now it gets changed to paid in green. If you wanted to add more notes to the transaction, click on the calendar details and we have a notes box. I'll type in a note dropped off at office. You can also select a payment type and enter in a check reference number. So I'll click save. And right below we have our expenses. I'll enter in random amounts. We have data on the reports that I will show you later. If you wanted to upload any invoices or receipts, you would simply click on this document with a paperclip icon. If we go back up here to the tenant's name, we have this white arrow button. If I click on it, we get this drop down. The first option is to invite the tenant for online payments. You would simply click on the screen button. If I click on lease, we can see the lease information. You can edit this here. If I click on tenant actions, we can move out the tenant and we can add in a new tenant. And we can also send a rent receipt to the tenant. We have more notices under tenants, bulk actions, and you can also mass email all of your tenants at once. So we have late rent notices, rent receipts, and lease renewals. They all have the same formatting and it's all the same process as far as sending them out. So I will show you a rent receipt. Simply check mark the tenant that you wanna send the notice to. You can print, email, or publish to the portal. I'll click on preview and we get a PDF. So at the top left corner where it says self, that's where the company name would appear. 
Right below we have the tenant's name. We can see the default message. You can customize this and create your own templates. We can see 1000 due, 1000 collected, ending balance zero. Under tenants, we also have the tenant balance history. If you wanted to see a full payment history for a specific tenant, this is going to be the best place. You can select the property from the drop down menu here. And then the tenant's name in this gray box. We have a six month preview. We can see what was due, what we received, and the ending balance. At the bottom left corner, we have a tenant payment history report. Normally our users print this out if they need to take the tenant to court. Where it says self, that's where your company name would appear. We have the tenant's name and their contact information would appear here. We have the current lease terms and at the bottom, the rent payment history. So on the left, we can see what was owed on the right, we can see what was collected, and we can see the notes that I wrote earlier under the notes column. Most of our reports you can export to Excel. If you wanted to customize the report a little bit more, you can also print or save as a PDF. Next is the Owners tab. If we go to the Owner Center, we'll see a list of our owners. So we have Bob on the left, the balance on the right, and to see how this was calculated, we'll go to Take Actions, View Owner Balance History. For February, we can see we received 1,000, 150 expenses, 850 ending balance. Let's say I want to pay Bob 850. I'll click on Record Owner Draw at the bottom left, enter in the amount, and save. Now we can see it was recorded and we have an ending balance of zero. Let's say I want to send the owner an owner statement. I'll go to Owners, Bulk Actions, Generate Owner Reports. And again, you simply check mark who you want to send the report to. You can print, email, or publish to the portal. I'll click on Preview and we'll get a PDF. Where it says self, that's where the company name would appear. Right below, we have the owner's name. At the top, we have summary. It's exactly what we saw on the owner balance history. 850 owner draw, ending balance zero. We can see the money coming in right below from the property, the tenant. We see the amount and the notes again. And right below, we have the expenses. Next is the Vendors tab. So on the Vendor Center, you would see a list of your vendors. I don't have any right now, so I'll click on Add Vendor. Let's say we have a vendor named ABC Gardening Company. We would enter in their email, phone numbers, tax ID number for 1099s that the system can print, email, and e file. You can also write notes, upload any documents, and you can also map this vendor to a specific expense row. So I'll go ahead and I'll check mark the gardener expense row so the system can keep track of the vendor's balance. So on the left, we can see the vendor's name. On the right, we have the vendor's balance. So to see how that was calculated, I'll go to Take Actions, View Vendor Balance History. Under February, we can see $50 of expenses, zero vendor payments, which is why it's showing up in red because the software is telling me that I still need to pay the vendor. So right here at the bottom left corner, I'll click on record vendor payment. I'll enter in $50 and save. And now we can see that it has been recorded and the ending balance is zero. Next is the banks tab. This is where you can print checks. We support pre-printed checks and blank check stock and one check per page and three checks per page. 
You can also reconcile the bank accounts here as well. Next, we have the task tab. The task tab is where you can receive maintenance requests from tenants and where you can also create work orders. If you checkmark this box, you'll get an email for every time a tenant submits a maintenance request to you. I'll click on add task. I'll say that this is a door repair. You can upload files or pictures, write a description, select the property, select a unit, select a date and a time, and you can also assign it to a specific vendor. When you do that, the vendor will receive an email notification. So I'll click save. Now we have it listed here and we do have a calendar view under task calendar. Here's that door repair that was just added. If I click on it, we get this pop up and we can see all the details. Last is the reports tab. We have a lot of reports here. We have the income and expense report, the rent roll, the late rent report, the online rent collection report. I'll show you the income and expense report and this can be run for all properties or a specific one and for any time interval. So I'll click generate. At the top, we can see the total net income. We can see where the money came from. Rents received 1000 and the notes. Right below we have all of the expenses. If I scroll down, we also have tax reports. So we have the Schedule E and the 1099s. I'll show you the Schedule E. So at the top left corner, this is where the properties would appear. And then in these ABC columns, the system will automatically enter in all of the income and expenses that you entered in throughout the year. And that's an overview of the software.